Hello and welcome to our webinar today on finding life balance. I'm Katie Whittigan and I think we're gonna have a lot of fun today. We're gonna to talk a lot about what the secrets are to actually finding this life balance that is so elusive. Before we uh, actually get started though, if you could put in the chat box your name and favorite thing to do. If you're joining us by watching this recording after the fact, then this is where you pause and just write down um, something that you love to do. You'll notice that there's a picture there of um, a rock climber. This happens to be one of my favorite things to do. This will come into play later as I ask you um, to think about the things that you enjoy in your life because this is going to factor into finding life balance. So just take a moment, put in the chat box your name and uh, some things that you like to do. I see one comment, hiking and being in nature. Hi, welcome. Uh, I also love that. What are some other things that people enjoy doing in their life, things that bring you joy? Go ahead and type in the chat box. Laying out in the sun by the pool. Oh, I couldn't agree more. Uh, sunbathing and being, it's like a warm blanket wrapping you up. I love that feeling. Anything else? I also sometimes, um, it's funny. I really, I have two kids. Sometimes I really enjoy playing with my kids because they get me into this playful way of being. Sometimes I really dislike playing with my kids because they want to order me around. <laughs> so sometimes there's things I enjoy doing, but not always. Um, talking with my two best friends. Yes, that's a great one. Remember that one. That's going to um, come into play later. Making art, cooking, and singing. Love that creativity. I just started getting into making art too. Being in nature and music. Yes, the other day I put on some music and danced around my house and was like, man, I don't know why I don't do this more often. It's so much fun. Great. Thank you so much for posting the things that um, you love doing. Uh, for those of you who haven't done it yet, just keep um, going and um, keep a, a mind or a mental note of what these things are that you enjoy doing. All right. So without further ado... Uh, just a little bit of information about me. So uh, my name is Katie Whittigand, and I do um, work out of Root Natural Health, and I offer um, behavior change consulting. Um, basically, there's just a lot of people who struggle sometimes with wanting to make changes in their lives, but not exactly knowing how to do so. So that's something that I can help with. I do have a master's in applied positive psychology. This does not make me a licensed therapist. I actually chose not to go the talk therapy route, although I think it has value, um, but more the how to really create the life you're um, wanting by knowing where you are and where you wanna go, not just where you've been. Um, I'm an intuitive life coach. So um, what that means is I, I not only use my training and skills and education for coaching, but I also help people reconnect with their own internal sense of wisdom. Um, sometimes uh, we get really fuzzy on the best next step when we don't have a really clear connection with our own um, internal guidance system on what feels like the right next step. So that's something I help clients with. I'm a quantum healing hypnotist. So I do use hypnosis sometimes with, with clients um, who are really struggling or blocked in some areas in their life. And I'm a certified tiny habits coach. And then you'll see there's a picture of me rock climbing. Um, it's something I like to do um, as often as I can. So that's enough about me. Let's talk a little bit about finding life balance. So the, the slide you see here says the lie. I think it's an important um, it's important to call out the lie. And the lie is that there is such a thing as this perfect life balance. Uh, you see this picture there of this rock, like perfectly balanced. And the reason why I think it's important to call, out, call it out as a lie is that it's common in our lives that we have this preconceived notion that there is such a thing as this perfect balance, that somehow we're gonna find this happy equilibrium in our life if we could just balance all the competing demands for our attention. And while there is a way to find more life satisfaction and um, 
find more joy in your process forward. I want to say that when it comes to all these competing demands in your life, there's never a perfect balance. There's not this like, oh, well, if I spend 30 minutes with my kid here and I spend this amount of time at work, that's not how it really works, right? Because sometimes you might have an exciting project at work and you wanna spend more time there, but you're not spending as much time with the child. And so then you feel guilt because it's not an equal, perfectly balanced amount of time, right? Or maybe you're spending more time with the family and you're not working on some work projects and then you feel guilt again. So it's this constant cycle of shame and guilt and worry and overwhelm and being stretched in all directions. So throw it up in the chat box if you can resonate with what I'm saying, if you felt like um, that exact sort of situation for yourself, um, go ahead and throw that in the chat box. I wanna see if, Yes, very much so. Okay, thanks for your um, input, Holly. So um, yeah, and for those of you who are watching this recording after the fact, um, really think through if you know and have lived that experience. So it's important to call it out. Now I'm not, obviously this whole thing is about finding life balance, but let's get it out of the way that there's this perfect amount of balance that you're gonna divvy your time up, okay? So that's not the approach we're gonna take, but we are going to take an approach to get us there. Um, I'm gonna put these down because I, let's see, the truth. So you see an image there of someone juggling. So the truth is that when it comes to all the competing demands in our life, quite frequently, it's really much more about um, our actual juggling of the various competing, competing demands, where the analogy is that in your hand might be your family right now, and this work project might be up here, and your health might be coming down here, and your relationship might be here, and they're constantly evolving in what's the closest thing or what's got your attention in that moment, in that day, in that week, in that month. And that's more accurate to our experiences. Now, that does not to say that that feels balanced in any way. So again, we're going to talk about how to um, balance this juggling act in a way that serves you better. But just to say that there is no perfect amount of time, and this is really the experience that it's commonly is. So I'm going to show you a little video just for a couple minutes of um, this TED Talk that kind of talks about this um, concept. And then we'll go from there. <laughs> Today, let's talk about balance from a little bit of a different perspective. From this side, life balance is a concept that is intriguing and desirable and also completely unrealistic. I mean, even now, look up here and you'll see I'm not balanced. I'm constantly making adjustments and corrections to protect myself on this precarious platform. And after all this work, after all this effort, I haven't really gone anywhere. I'm still in the same place. You see, folks. We're engaged in the art, the process of balancing throughout our life, which is making those adjustments, making decisions, making corrections over time, responding to opportunities and challenges. But balance is something you never attain. And yet you've been told that this is the ultimate goal, the ultimate purpose to achieve life balance. I Googled life balance this morning and there were 367 million results. Think of that. 367 million ideas or observations or opinions on how you can attain the unattainable. And so we beat ourselves up in pursuit of this idea of balance, thinking that if we work hard enough or, or, or we're smart enough or long enough that we can get to this moment where it all evens out. And I'm here to tell you it isn't gonna happen. You will never achieve perfect balance. And along the way, we beat ourselves up with the guilt and we restrict our opportunities. And the pursuit of balance, I think actually is a negative impact on our lives. So I wanna liberate you from that today with a new philosophy. 
a new approach. And I encourage you not to live your lives on balance, but rather off balance on purpose. Off balance on purpose, because off balance is your reality. That's a good thing. You have to be off balance in order to learn, in order to grow, in order to love or serve others or improve yourself in any meaningful way. The question is, are you off balance in response to your world? Or are you off balance on purpose? Deliberate, intentional, and connected to a sense of meaning, purpose, mission that you bring to what you do every single day. I mean, that's what causes change for yourself, for your family, your community, for your world. Purpose. Purpose. All right. So going back to this idea, um, what does being off balance actually feel like? So I'd love for you to put in the chat box um, what you actually notice and feel like when it's off balance. Uh, he, he mentioned feeling reactionary. So that's definitely an aspect. He mentioned um, feeling, um, well, one thing is feeling stressed or unhappy, um, even overwhelmed by all the competing, competing demands and resentful. So we, we talked about this briefly. We know what feeling off balance feels like, right? So give me a yes in the chat box. Yes, everyone understands what this feels like being off balance. Yes, feeling confused. Yep, absolutely. We can feel confused when we're feeling off balance um, or lacking clarity on really what the best next step is. And scattered. Yes. So <laughs> these are the things that um, really deplete us and is what leads us to come to these type of webinars because we're like, something's gonna change. So then what does life balance actually feel like? And so I'm posing this question to you. I, there's no right answer. Uh, there's no wrong answer. Uh, just think for a second. If you had this magical life balance, what would it feel like? So go ahead and put in the chat box what you think it would feel like. If you don't have access to the chat box for some reason because you're only um, on your phone or something, um, feel free to um, unmute yourself and, and give an answer as well. Uh, so we have one answer, organized. Yeah, feeling organized or um, intentional like that video mentioned as far as how we're moving forward. Anything else? At ease, yeah, I, I love that term at ease. It kind of makes me think of like sitting on the beach with my feet in the sand, like just like, ah, uh, feeling, not that you have to be at the beach to feel at ease, peaceful, calm, centered, efficient, and healthy, yes. Too often we might sacrifice our own personal needs in order to meet some of the competing, competing demands in our life and then our own health is sacrificed, um, satisfied. Yeah, satisfied with your day-to-day -day on how you spent your time. Things are fantastic. So keep these in mind as we talk today because these are the things you're going for. This is what you wanna feel more, not after a month, not after you know three months, but like tomorrow, today. Like these are things you wanna reach for today. So that being said, uh, let's look at uh, some of the, aspects of being in life balance, right? So uh, these are some of the things that I came up with, but I think all of your words are fantastic and, and get to the same means, right? So feeling more proactive versus reactive, feeling in control versus out of control, feeling calm as we, we identified, feeling like you're thriving or satisfied and um, even feeling grateful. So I think uh, these are all great aspects of what it really actually feels like to be in life balance. So how do we get there? How do we get there? Well, the secret really is uh, becoming more purposeful in how you use your energy. So I'm going to invite you, he talked about being off balance on purpose. And I'm going to invite you to take this concept, not necessarily to be off balance, but to view everything you do through the lens of your energy as a resource that you're spending, okay? So it's important to think through your day-to-day -day where you're spending energy and where you're receiving energy. 
So let me explain a little bit more about what I mean by that. Because this is the lens that's going to simplify some of the questions you might have on how you spend your time and how much of your time you spend on each of your competing demands. So it starts by identifying what depletes your energy. What depletes your energy? And what I mean by that is what are some of the things that you spend your time doing that at the end of it, feels more exhausting. Um, you already have maybe more resistance to do it in the first place. Um, some examples that I've heard is, you know, sometimes it's just sitting on a computer all day long. Um, maybe it's um, doing certain activities. So go ahead and take, uh, put it into the chat box, some things that you find that depletes your energy. Things that deplete your energy. Um, and if you're not going to put it in the chat box, it's okay to just write it down because this webinar is going to ask a lot of reflective questions for you to gain some clarity and insight on how this applies to your life. So one thing that depletes your energy is too many required tasks. That's a great one. We're going to come back to that one. Definitely the computer and meetings. Too, too much time on a computer, too many meetings. Yep, that can be depleting. Absolutely. Anything else? Too much on my schedule. That's a really great one too. That kind of goes with this idea of too many required tasks, just too many things on your schedule. Oftentimes when I'm working with people in a coaching capacity, um, like life coaching, there is this question that eventually comes up, which is why do we have so much that you've committed to and, and you've made commitments and we need to see those through and can we adjust those commitments for the future? Uh, long work days and too many commitments. Yep, too much on my schedule. I love it. So very similar common theme here. Um, Overcommitment. Overcommitment to things um, making you feel a little more scattered. So great. Uh, sounds like we have a lot of commonality in what depletes us. Now this is an important question and one that people often don't know off the top of their head. What gives you energy? What are things that when you complete them or engage them or do them, you feel inspired, you feel motivated, you feel excited, you want to talk about it, or, you know, maybe it's more subtle than that. More, maybe it's just a walk, a 15 minute walk out in nature that um, helps improve your energy or your mood. So go ahead and put in the chat box things that give you energy. And again, if you don't put in the chat box, do make sure you write it down because you're going to come back to some of this later. All right, we have fresh air and blue skies. Absolutely, the beautiful colors of the leaves changing. Exercise and meditation. Meditation is a fantastic way. There's never any um, a harm to meditation. Uh, walks outside in quiet time, traveling, making art and exercise and outdoors. Right. So it's interesting because a lot of these things in my experience when working with people are things that they tend to put on the back burner so that they can then address all these tasks and commitments that they've made. So what ends up happening is they fill their day with things that are energy depleting and they ignore or don't engage in the things that are energy giving. This is the lens and at the core of feeling out of balance in your life. So instead of thinking specifically about family or kids or relationships or work projects, I want you to think about it through energy. What is energy depleting and what is energy giving? Now, what I'm not saying here is that you're going to be able to just create a lifestyle where everything is energy giving, right? But let's go through a typical day of a typical person, okay? So a typical day might look something like this. You wake up late for a variety of reasons, a little tired, and you're rushed to work. This rushed feeling already automatically deducts energy from your energy bank. Then you sit at a desk all day on your computer. Again, it's energy depleting. Even if you like your work, even if it's creative, even if it's interesting, it's still going to be energy depleting um, when you sit all day because our bodies are meant to move, even if it's just a gentle walk. 
And then, okay, then you go grocery shopping. That, um, you know, could be energy depleting, lots of people, having to park, having to negotiate around people, um, that kind of stuff. Then maybe you're cooking dinner. And at this point now, you've already engaged in your whole day being energy depleting. So even if you like cooking, at this point, it may still be energy depleting because now you're working from an empty bank of energy, right? Then you have to clean the kitchen. That's not usually very much fun for anyone, right? And then um, you get to a point where you are um, wanting to just take some time to yourself, but you're, you're depleted. You don't have a lot of energy. So going on a walk or exercising or being outside isn't always the thing that you feel like doing when you feel depleted. So then you're like, okay, well, I can just sit and watch TV. And sometimes I enjoy that. So that's like, that's, that's the thing I'm going to do. I'm going to give myself a little bit of this time to do something I want to do, except that not all of TV watching is energy giving, right? Sometimes it's energy depleting. It's still just more sitting there. Sometimes it's very dramatic or stress inducing because the scenes that you're viewing are kind of stressful. So that could also be energy depleting. And then you end up staying up late, watching Netflix and going to bed late to only repeat it again by waking up late and rushing to work the next day. So this is just an example and elements of this can be true for all of us at different times in our lives. But ultimately, I think we can all relate to this example about how your whole day could end up being filled with nothing but energy depleting tasks or events. So then let's go over another potential example. So in this example, um, perhaps you wake up early because you didn't go to bed completely depleted and you go on a walk and you get some of that time in nature. Even if it's just 15 minutes, you're like, oh, look at that. The moon is still up or look at the sun rising or look at the sun shining on the trees, you know, just whatever it is, you, you have this, you know, experience of energy giving, even if it's for a short time. Then you still sit at a, a desk um, all day on your computer because it's the work, it's the job you've chosen at this time. It's still the nature of the work that you do. So it's still pretty energy depleting. But during that day, you do take a walk at work and listen to some favorite music. So some of you had mentioned music as something that's energy giving. So you're intentionally now building in some energy giving into your day so that you're not going home or going to the grocery store is depleted. So you go to the grocery store, you know that in the past growing the grocery store felt depleting. So then you decide to listen to your favorite audiobook. Maybe it's inspirational. Maybe it excites you about some new topic or something you're interested in or what, what have it, have you, right? So, so then it's a little bit more energy giving in that time because you, you um, are enjoying the audiobook. Then you go home and this is really personal preference. Maybe cooking dinner is energy depleting. Maybe you enjoy cooking and now you're not as depleted as you were before because you've built in at least a little bit of energy giving things to offset that, you know, those hours you spent on the computer. Then um, you ask the kids to clean the kitchen <laughs> or whoever, you know, you cooked, they clean. And automatically this is, can be energy giving for you, right? Because then you can sit down, you can take a breather, you can take um, five minutes to meditate, you can write down in your journal the things that you're grateful for, the things that went well today, or the things you're excited about from the audio book you heard about. So there's this opportunity, even if it's just for 15 minutes for more energy giving. Then maybe you watch some inspirational in TV. You're a little more intentional on how you want to feel while you watch the TV. And you're like, you know, you know, what really inspires me is when I listen to so-and-so talk about what have you, right? And so then you um, put some intention there and it's energy giving. And then you know, you pre-design how much time you're going to spend watching that. You turn it off and you go to bed early. So you can repeat the day tomorrow with a walk in the morning, waking up early, right? So these are just some examples of this concept of really viewing how you spend your energy throughout the day and trying to balance that out more. Now, visually, this looks like you have out of balance intentionally or on purpose. And it is out of balance. But remember, sitting at the desk on the computer took up many more hours of your day than some of those other energy giving things. So it's still not necessarily equal with the amount of time spent. But you'd be amazed how intentionally building in a lot of these energy 
energy giving things in your day can affect how you feel at the end of the day and your willingness to go on a walk, be in nature, listen to music, create art and what have you. All right, these are all of course examples. All of our unique experiences are a little different. So how can you make more tasks energy giving? So thinking back to the things that you put in the chat box earlier about the things that you enjoy, I want you to start brainstorming a little bit, grab a piece of paper and a pen and think about how you can take those things that you enjoy that you put in the chat box, the very first thing and build those more into your day. All right. And if you have an idea that you'd love to share that you think would also be interesting for others to hear, please do add it to the chat box. So I'm going to give a little bit of an example. I'm going to go back up to that chat and say one of them here was hiking, being in nature, right? Well, we kind of talked about that one already. As an example, if you woke up early enough, you could go on a 15 minute walk and get a little bit of that nature time to start your day off intentionally with something that's energy giving versus energy depleting. Another example here is talking with my two best friends. So perhaps when you go on that walk in the middle of the day at work or you're breaking up something that's really energy depleting with a short break, that you call your best friend while you go on that walk in nature, things of that nature. So uh, as you're brainstorming this, I'd love to see some chats on that. Uh, here we go. One is fresh flowers on my desk. Yeah. So it's it can be little things. It doesn't have to be two hours at a spa every day in order to be energy giving. Although if you're really depleted, it may take some more intentional effort to catch you back up. But it's this idea of little things that bring you joy can have a big profound impact on the amount of energy you can preserve throughout the day. So yes, fresh flowers on the desk. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to put in the chat boxes? ideas for how they can take those things they enjoy and bring them joy and build them into their day-to-day -day more intentionally. While I'm waiting for people to collect their thoughts, I'll give um, one more example. This is a common example from people who really desire to exercise more. A lot of you wrote exercise and meditation as something that is energy giving. Um, and a lot of people struggle with the time to exercise or the desire. So if you're intentional about how much energy giving tasks you have throughout your day and trying to make that more imbalanced in the sense of more toward energy giving, you'll probably have that energy to exercise. And if you don't like exercise, you can build in something that you enjoy. Perhaps it's a podcast, it's an audio book, it's talking to your best friend while you're cycling on a bike, while you're going on a walk, things of that nature. And oftentimes people do these things with this idea of I need to lose weight. And I really try to challenge that with maybe do it with the intention of um, experiencing more joy. Because at the end of the day, we become resentful when our day to day is filled with the energy depleting things and then we don't feel like there's anything that is helping to refill us, but no one is going to refill you. You have to refill you. And the only way to do that is to build in more energy giving things into your day. So this is why it's really important that you are aware of what brings you joy and what does increase your energy, your mood, so that you can um, be intentional. All right. I don't see any other um, notes here. So we'll just move on. And I hope that you guys have your own notes on how can you make more tasks energy giving? So I do wanna show you um, a little funny picture I have here, this big garage sale, right? I don't want to impress upon you the delusion that everything can be energy giving. It's not always going to be that way, right? You're aware that there's a lot of competing things for your attention, and you're aware that a lot of things are energy depleting. But that doesn't mean that you can't be more intentional and creative in the things that you really don't want to do, like cleaning out the garage, for instance, um, so that it could become more energy giving. So here's an example. Um, a few weeks ago, we were cleaning out the garage at my house. And when we were doing that, um, I was like, you know, I really am not interested in uh, doing this. So, oops, 
So um, why don't we make it fun, right? Why don't we uh, break up the garage? You clean this half, I clean this half. We'll make it a little competition. We'll put on some music we love and we'll sit there and we'll try to um, see who can get their half of the garage done first. And whoever gets it done first, gets to um, choose the movie for the night, choose where we go out to eat, um, things of that nature, right? So there's this opportunity to create more playfulness and fun and even some of the most energy depleting or mundane tasks. It's about being more intentional and viewing your day-to-day -day through this lens of energy. Okay, sorry about that feedback, but um, we got that taken care of. Okay, so that being said, here are some tips on how to build in more energy giving things into your day to day so that you can experience more of the imbalance on purpose. And here are some ideas. So prioritize energy giving tasks. So what that means is, you know, thinking about your day, you know, you're going to have some energy depleting things throughout your day. So how can you build in some of those energy giving things up front in the beginning of the day? Maybe it's meditation. Maybe it's a walk outside. Maybe it's listening to a podcast, whatever it is that fills your bucket of energy, right? Prioritize those first. Don't wait for some magical time to appear out of nowhere later after you're already depleted. Start with more of the energy giving and you'd be amazed how that momentum can build. And then when you go into those energy depleting tasks, it, it actually withdraws from your energy bucket a little less than it would have before. And then an additional tip here, add more joy to energy depleting tasks. So this is the example of the garage that I just gave. You know, you know right off the bat, you do not want to clean the garage. It's energy depleting. Well, at least it was in the past. How could we make it more playful? How could we make it more fun? How could we make a meeting more playful and fun? If you have no control over that meeting, how can you um, do something before that meeting that's energy giving to you, even if it's just for five to 10 minutes before you go in there, knowing that that meeting is energy depleting to you. So that's one. Remove energy depleting tasks where possible. Remove energy depleting tasks where possible. Well, in order to do that, you have to become aware of what is all energy depleting in your life. So we, I asked you to write in that chat box. Um, so go back to what you wrote down for what was energy depleting. You know, some of you said being on the computer all day. Well, you know, that's not to say that you have to change your job, but you know, perhaps that's something you want to look into. You don't have to have that job, but I'm not saying that you have to go that far. Um, it could be things like, you know, every time I go to the bank, I have to stand in line and I feel like I'm wasting my time and I feel it's like energy depleting. Then maybe you download the app to the bank and you submit your checks you remotely over the app, right? So there are ways to be creative about identifying what's energy depleting in your life. And sometimes you'll be surprised there's ways to remove it. I hate cleaning the kitchen. Well, maybe you sit down with the family and say, if I clean or if I cook, then who's going to clean because I'm not going to do both anymore or whatever it is. So really identifying where change is possible here. Now, this is where we're going to come back to the comments that made earlier, which was about um, too many tasks, too busy of a schedule. Now, these are not changes you can make tomorrow because you've made commitments. And I know that all of you are individuals of integrity and you're going to see some commitments through. But I'm going to ask you a tough question. Why do you have so many commitments? Why have you said yes to so many things? Why have you agreed? Why is there not a boundary for your time to where you can have some time to go on that walk or to go do the things that are energy giving to you? So I'm asking these questions because not only is it a common question I ask a lot of my clients, but it's also a lived experience of my own. I'm deeply curious and interested in many things. And so even though I liked my job, I would commit to all the side projects. And then I'd be curious about this nonprofit and I'd commit to volunteering over there. And then I'd, I'd commit to helping my kids at their school. And even though these were things I cared about and could have been energy giving individually, 
all together, I was so busy running around like a chicken with my head cut off that they all became energy depleting. So just because something is energy giving doesn't mean it couldn't become energy depleting if you're overcommitted. So while you might not be able to change all of your commitments tomorrow, you can create and identify a boundary now with how much time um, you want to preserve for yourself for energy giving things and where you want to prioritize your energy and your time so that the next projects that come up or the next things that come up, you know what your boundary is beforehand so that you can stop and ask yourself, do I really want to say yes to this or am I saying yes out of obligation or do I need to create a boundary here? You know, my, my boss is asking me to do an additional task. It, is it um, time now for me to stand up and say, if I'm going to do these other tasks, I've already been assigned well, it's important that I preserve the time for that and I need to say no to this or I can't create this yet. That was an answer I used to give to my boss. Yep, I can address that in two months. Well, we need it now. Well, then I'll need to take some of these other things off my plate because I can't do it all. And, and really starting to hold up some of those boundaries, you might be surprised people start to respond by going, oh, that makes sense. Okay, let's reprioritize our tasks here. So I'm going to encourage you, even after this webinar, to stop and think about that, write down this question, you know, why am I overcommitted and what are the boundaries I need to create in order to preserve energy giving time for myself? That's a big question. These are some sit and think about it a little later um, and write down some ideas that come to you. All right. That being said, the last one says purposely or purposely unbalance energy depleting with energy giving. So throw in as much energy giving as you can, not only prioritizing it for the you know, beginning of the day, but throwing it into everything you're doing, whether it be five to 10 minutes here and there. Um, if you're able to spend a full 45 minutes, fantastic. That's going to just fill your energy bucket, but really be intentional about what is depleting your energy, what is giving you energy and ensuring that that is preference to the energy giving more because there's going to be things that are energy depleting that are somewhat out of your control. For instance, the nature of your work primarily being on a computer. All right. So with those tips, um, I want to dig in a little bit more and talk about prioritizing energy giving tasks. Start the day with joy, awe, or gratitude. So this is where the positive psychology in me comes out with this idea that when I talk about prioritizing energy giving tasks, I'm not just um, talking about going on a quick 10 minute walk because that 10 minute walk is going to be much more energy giving if it's much if it's met with more of your presence, of you being really aware, of you actually looking up at the sky and feeling a sense of awe, because awe, joy, and gratitude are three emotions that when felt are highly correlated with a higher sense of well-being and happiness in general in life. So the more you can feel those emotions, the better. And it's not just about feeling joy, awe, or gratitude. It's also about sort of um, reaping the full benefit from it. So even if you're on a walk with someone, say from work, and you're on a 15 minute walk, it's not, it's one thing to look up and say, gosh, those changing leaves are beautiful. And it's even another to say it out loud. Because then you're adding more momentum to that emotion. You're, you're um, monopolizing on the emotion a little bit more thoroughly by bringing your attention to it. And then it opens up the opportunity for your friend to even feel that moment of awe as well. And then keep looking for more additional opportunities to feel that awe or that joy or that gratitude. An example is, you know, playing with one of my younger sons. Um, you know, he wants to play Legos or whatever. And I always have a hard time getting into pretend play mode. But then I just stopped and watched him with the big smile on his face. And he was just so bright and shiny and excited. And just bringing my full attention to watching his joy 
ended up helping me feel joy. And then I said it out loud, you know, watching how much fun you're having with those Legos really fills me with joy. Then he looks up to me, big smile on his face and says, I love you, mama. Then I'm feeling gratitude and joy, right? So, so um, bringing mindfulness to the things that you're doing in order to really monopolize on joy, awe, and gratitude. Okay, so that's what I mean by prioritizing energy giving tasks. All right, so add more joy to energy depleting tasks. So I, I addressed this a little bit, but it's this idea like the garage or like the exercise, you know, really thinking through and identifying the things that give you joy and then adding them to the energy depleting tasks. If you've got to clean the house, do it listening to your favorite mixtape, of course, mixtape, I'm aging myself, your favorite music on whatever app. <laughs> so, um, you know, th this is about being intentional. When we go on autopilot and we just go from you know, demand to demand to demand on our schedule, and we don't intentionally build these things in, that's where we feel imbalanced and out of control and overwhelmed and depleted. So really think through adding more joy to those energy depleting tasks. Um, an example um, that I uh, have with a recent memory is a client that um, always went for a break at lunch. He worked on the computer primarily and he would go to the, the you know, sort of area where their snacks were and stuff. And he'd get a cookie every day. And he's like, I gotta stop eating cookies. I'm gaining weight. And I said, okay, but why, why do you keep going down there? Well, I don't know. I just really like it. I like I, I guess I like the cookies. And I said, well, everybody likes cookies, but I think there's more to the story. What is it about your break that you enjoy? And he said, oh, well, I get to talk to everybody when I'm over there because we all sit there and chat, talk about our families, what's going on for the weekend. And I just really love that. And I said, great. So grab yourself a soda water and go and talk to everybody because that's what you're really enjoying. And that's what's bringing you joy to break up some of the energy depleting of sitting at computer all day. Turns out that's exactly what was filling his bucket. So he could just keep doing it by altering what he was putting in his mouth while he was doing it. So add more joy to energy depleting tasks. Remove energy depleting tasks where possible. So I talked about this as far as the bank app, but I put this picture here because this is actually an opportunity to get really creative. There's a lot of technology solutions out there to make things more efficient or easier for people. Now, while um, some of those could be energy depleting, spending 45 minutes on Facebook isn't necessarily um, statistically a great way to be to feel energy giving, um, although it can be depending on what you're viewing. Um, I'm thinking more about um, if if going to the grocery store is energy depleting for you, you know, order your groceries on Instacart and have them delivered and um, use the app on your phone to do that. Um, if budgeting is energy depleting, go grab one of those budgets that connects to your uh, bank account and starts, you know, automatically categorizing some of those for you so that it's um, less time you're spending on energy depleting tasks. So really be creative here about how you can use some of the magnificent technologies and things around you to adjust how much time you spend on these energy depleting tasks that you just keep doing because you've always been doing it. And you haven't asked yourself if the status quo is really serving you and whether or not you could do it differently. So this is another piece of that homework is really thinking through what energy depleting tasks can I remove or even adjust um, where possible. And then another aspect here is purposely unbalanced energy depleting uh, with energy giving, right? So we've talked a lot about this, but you want to intentionally um, create an imbalance between these things because there's plenty, there's no shortage of energy depleting requests on the average person. So how can you bring more joy to it? How can you spend less time on it? Or how can you front load yourself before you even go in. If you know you're gonna go into a team meeting and there's just a lot of negativity and a lot of distrust and there's a lot of issues with this team that you have at work, man, front load yourself with a great song list where you're dancing in the hall, right? Before you go in, because your energy level 
entering into that meeting is going to have an impact on those around you, believe it or not. And you may even start realizing that by purposely uh, prioritizing the energy giving before you go into something that's energy depleting, that you'll uh, be able to have people around you going, man, I've really noticed a, a shift in you. What are you doing? What's your secret? And then you can share with them so that they can be empowered with this very simple concept, but not always simple to carry out um, perspective on how to approach their day to day. All right, so we talked about the secret, becoming more purposeful and how you use your energy. So the whole time today was really about becoming more purposeful and how you use your energy, looking at it through the lens of energy, not through all the competing demands and how much time to spend on what, but really knowing what depletes you, what energizes you, what brings you joy, awe, and gratitude. So if you didn't get a chance yet, these are the things that you're going to write out, write about later for your homework. You're going to write down what depletes me, right? And make your list. What energizes me and what brings me joy, awe, and gratitude and write it all down. Then um, the next steps, like we talked about prioritizing what energizes you. So starting tomorrow or even for the rest of the afternoon, picking something that energizes you and building it in. Add joy to depleting tasks. How can you add some more joy to the, some depleting tasks you have? Uh, removing what you can and have more energy giving in your day than energy depleting. So these are the things for you to start looking at as you then design your day. You don't have to react to all the demands and all the commitments. Now you may have some commitments, you just have to see through. That doesn't mean the next time a commitment is brought before you that you have to agree to it because you need to think about these things and really design your day-to-day -day based on, um, on balancing out that energy giving with so much energy depleting. So that is what I have for you today. And I left some time for questions. Um, but first, I would love to just debrief a little bit and ask you, what was most helpful to you with what we talked about today? I really like to just get a temperature check on um, every webinar I do, what was most helpful for people. So feel free to put it in the chat or feel free to unmute yourself and go ahead and verbalize what was most helpful for you. I have a note here, having a system to recreate my life. Yes. Oftentimes we overcomplicate things by overanalyzing what we do, what we should be doing, how we should be doing it, what people want from us. And this simplifies it all by looking at through purely the lens of energy. Knowing about the lie of perfect balance. Yes, I'm so glad. So basically what I'm trying to do is give you permission to be out of balance but I want you to be out of balance intentionally. I want you to create the, the imbalance that you want. I want you to, you to decide, I'm going to have more joy here. I'm going to create more gratitude and awe here. And I'm going to create more energy giving stuff with my, you know, intentionally knowing that I'm going to have to have some energy depleting later. Great. Those are some great comments. All right. So that being said, I want to give um, everyone an opportunity to have some time to potentially do some of their homework if they haven't had a chance to really think through all those questions we went over. And I would love if you could hold your phone up to this QR code and fill out the survey that pops up. It's just going to ask you some questions about your webinar today. It just helps me um, if there's any constructive feedback that you have, you can give that anonymously and it'll help me improve in my ability to uh, really empower all of you to really lead the lives you want to lead. So I'm going to leave this up here for just a minute. And even if you're watching this recording after the fact, you can still hold your um, camera up and, um, and you can um, do that survey at any time. 
Nicely done. Thank you. Oh, thank you for being here. Thank you very much for being here. This actually is energy giving for me when I can help empower people to be more intentional and become the architect of their own lives. So I do want to um, just let you know that there are some um, other ways you can work with me. I mentioned in the beginning, I do behavior change consulting, life coaching, and hypnosis. I do work out of Root Natural Health. I offer both um, virtual sessions and in person. And if you are interested, you can go to the Root Natural Health website and there is a deal um, if you're an existing patient there that you can get 20% off your first session. So um, you can call even to book that and ask them, you know, I'd like that 20% off if you're, you're an existing patient of Root Natural, Natural Health. Otherwise, feel free um, to uh, go on there and contact me if you ever need help in trying to apply these concepts to your unique situation. But otherwise, I just hope that you can take these ideas and start simply and feel empowered with those simple ways that you can start feeling better and thriving more in your life. So thank you very much. Uh, do I do virtual visits? Yes, I do. But I realize you probably wrote that before I just uh, saw that. So yes, I do virtual visits as well. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And I hope that you um, get to experience more energy giving. Thank you.